Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia poised to reap significant economic benefits throughout the phases of the Cabot St. Lucia project. Cruise passengers on the inaugural call since the pandemic will enjoy varied experiences based on COVID-19 vaccination status. And grade 6 students will soon sit the common entrance examinations. The construction and ultimate completion of Cabot St. Lucia will produce several economic benefits for St. Lucia. The project will not only add a new component to the country's tourism offering, but will also provide employment opportunities for St. Lucians. We get details in this report. Founder and executive chairman of Cabot St. Lucia explained that he first visited St. Lucia some five and a half years ago with a view of assessing the possibility of expanding the Cabot brand to the island. Ben Cowindoa, who is the founder and executive chairman of Cabot St. Lucia, stated that this initial visit had convinced him that St. Lucia was ideal to build the best golf course in the Caribbean. The chief executive officer explained that if successful, the project could reap huge rewards for St. Lucia, including bringing in a new type of tourist and contributing to the economy. Christine Thompson is the chief executive officer of Cabot St. Lucia. You know, this will bring to St. Lucia a new sector of tourism that currently doesn't exist today. In fact, it doesn't exist really anywhere in the region, which are really tourists that travel just to play golf. So most would come to a resort, enjoy the sand, the sea, the food, the, the culture, etc. And there might be a golf course that was part of a, a, an amenity of the resort and they might play, you know, golf one day, for example. But this, these are people that actually seek out the best golf courses all around the world and travel just for the golf. And I think what's great about, about this project is that, that those people right now are not coming to this part of the region. Um, not coming to St. Lucia and so it's a whole new sector of tourists um, they are also affluent and they also will spend a lot more time here so when we look at you know the the economic contribution to the economy that these people will bring it will be much greater than say others that might come on a cruise ship or stay at a, 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 as an all-inclusive resort for example the chief executive officer explained that Cabot is very committed to employing St. Lucians she added that upon completion, some 500 individuals are expected to be employed when in full operation. We're very committed to the employment of locals first, then regional, then expat. So we would only sort of bring in foreign workers where there is really a, a skill gap in one area, and there are a couple of those, yes. But, you know, if you look around our site now, you'll see Lucians everywhere. Um, our CFO is, is a St. Lucian, our accountant, our QS, our um, many members of the construction team. And that it's really satisfying for me to be able to sort of build a team that um, brings opportunity to this region at a time where we really need it more than anything else. Um, we also have a plan that even where we bring in foreigners, that those people don't stay you know very long we bring them we train them and that we can get people working for them to actually um, grow into those roles founder and executive chairman of cabot st lucia ben cowan indicated that the number of individuals employed during the construction phase will vary the nature of the construction which is multi-phases and sort of different than a single hotel which obviously has a construction and then a stabilization we have a multi-phase, you know, sort of construction schedule that'll last a decade. So I think the construction jobs will continue to be ongoing and the 500 is really the stabilized operation. Officials of Cabot St. Lucia have been working assiduously to alleviate several concerns that have been brought to the fore. These include the findings of a recently conducted archaeological investigation and local access to the Queen's Chain. As it relates to the archaeological investigation, Thompson explained that Cabot St. Lucia has been working with relevant stakeholders, including the St. Lucia National Trust and the St. Lucia Archaeological and Historical Society. The chief executive officer disclosed that the investigation revealed that there is nothing left of archaeological significance at the site. She also assured that St. Lucians will have access to the Queen's Chain. 
on Kazama Beach, for example, which is a large part of the Queen's chain, there's absolutely no restriction. You know, you come down to the beach, you walk past the covered properties all the way to the end like you're accustomed to it. Um, there are other parts of the Queen chain around, for example, Donkey Beach and Secret Beach, where the, it, it's sort of part of the development. But what we've committed to is that any St. Lucian who wants to access those beaches can come to our reception, can park, and we would escort them down in a golf cart to the beach until they were finished and they wanted to go back, and then we take them home. The project, which is expected to be completed in 2022, will be Cabot's third golf course and second resort in its expanding portfolio of world-class properties. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norvell. On Tuesday, 29th June 2021, when St. Lucia welcomes its first cruise call since the pandemic, passengers of the Celebrity Millennia vessel will be subject to varied experiences based on their COVID-19 vaccination status. A distinction between fully vaccinated and non-fully vaccinated passengers will be made, and this will determine the extent of liberties they may enjoy during their visit. And margaret Adams is the Director of Product Development in the Ministry of Tourism. So the fully vaccinated passengers are those who actually have completed the regimen, the COVID-19 vaccination reg regimen, which is approved by the Ministry of Health. So they would have had to arrive in St. Lucia at least two weeks. It would have been at least two weeks prior to the arrival in mm -hmm. St. Lucia. So these are your fully vaccinated visitors. And these persons will be allowed to free room, as we say, just like your land-based visitors. They can enjoy the services. Um, they can participate in your tours, they can go to the supermarket, they can do the, they can go to the beaches as well. And these persons will be identified by a wristband. And what we have, um, we have allowed them to utilize a white wristband, which will differentiate them from your non-fully vaccinated um, visitors. Non-fully vaccinated passengers are defined as a visitor who has either taken one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine or no dose at all. These passengers will be allowed to enjoy excursions in a controlled and supervised manner and will not be allowed to roam public spaces like the city centre. They are non fully vaccinated. They are not allowed to be taking pictures and roaming the city. They will be operating within a bubble, bubble. of predetermined experiences. They would have to book through your cruise agents or through the cruise desk. Adams assures that despite this and other controls in the subsector, as it is gradually reintroduced, locals will be able to immensely benefit. She says fully vaccinated passengers will be allowed to patronize shops in the city center, as was the norm pre-COVID, and the vendor's arcade will be open to receive passengers. So your locals will be able to participate. I can say that um, the ministry has been working assiduously in preparing them for providing services. Um, your tours, your transportation sector, your transportation providers, your sites and attractions, um, your vendors. And in fact, as of yesterday, we had a meeting with our vendors to prepare them in terms of what are the expectations, what are the guidelines surrounding you know, cruise passengers when they do come in. So the locals will be able to participate. I must say that they'll be able to benefit from the services that they will be able to provide to your fully vaccinated as well as those who are non-vaccinated but within a bubble. The inaugural return of cruise tourism on June 29 with the Celebrity Millennium jumpstarts the season that will see most of the 30 scheduled calls between August and October of this year. The upcoming National Health Insurance Scheme, NHI, will ensure the poor and vulnerable are not left behind. Jacques Hinkson Compton tells us more. Upon launch of the NHI system, the government of St. Lucia seeks to provide the more underprivileged elements of society with insurance coverage. Chief Economist for Research and Policy in the Department of Finance, Janai Leos, says the cost of coverage for those unable to afford will be subsidized by the state. One of the, 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 the notions that the state is, is looking to do is where persons are poor and vulnerable and whatnot, to ensure that those persons can be provided with uh, um, insurance policies mm -hmm. that would allow them to access an array of services and benefits that they otherwise would not have. So I think CARE is, care is, um, is, is being placed in the design of this, mm -hmm. that whatever is to be designed, the poor, the vulnerable and what have you, will be proxy means tested to ensure mm -hmm. that they meet the, the requisite standards for poverty and vulnerability. For the development of the NHI system will determine the most pragmatic model to produce a public safety net. One of the things that we have been working with the World Bank and our other stakeholders as we are in the design, design element 
is to address which modality is best. So would it be best for the state to purchase all of the policies and then have persons who are poor and vulnerable receive from the state and also persons who are not poor and vulnerable but would like to, to purchase insurance to do that for the state as well or whether it may be best to have the state simply focus on the poor and vulnerable and allow your non-poor to be able to access through their employer, through a provider of their choice and so forth. The intent of the final phase of NHI is to include all demographics, including the underprivileged and persons in retirement age. From the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Jacques Hingson Compton reporting. Come Tuesday, 29th June 2021, some 2,167 grade 6 students across the island are expected to sit the common entrance examinations. Chief Education Officer in the Department of Education, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, expressed elation that despite the many challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, students are finally able to sit the exam. She shared words of encouragement. You've come this far. It has been challenging for you, but I also saw the joy when I went into the various schools and saw how our grade sixes, I would think for the most part, loved being back at school. So we want you to take that energy into your common entrance. We want to encourage our parents to be kind to our students, to not put undue pressure on them, to really enjoy the moment with them, to applaud their efforts to appreciate their skills, but to wish them well. As they move into the final days, it is just time to relax with family. And we do hope that whatever results come out, we can be pleased with them. We are part of the Universal Secondary School Education Program. And so every one of our children gets an opportunity. But we want to make sure that whichever secondary school they go to, they are pleased with their own efforts. And so we wish them well, wish our parents well, the chief education officer also indicated the move to Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA, which will assess students on a continuous basis. We note that we're moving into CPEA in the next two academic years. There is a progression. A lot of training has happened for our teachers. We continue to work with our parents in terms of information. And the CPEA is the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment run through the office of CXC with us. And it is another opportunity for us to look at other skills and not only the traditional sit down common entrance, but assessments as we go along throughout the period of time that will also contribute to the students end grades. I'm sure that many parents can look online to find out more information about the CPA. And similarly, we are providing parent meetings to give our parents more information in a more intimate and small group setting. Chief Education Officer in the Department of Education, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer. The government of St. Lucia continues to make strides towards achieving public sector modernization. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought to the fore the significance of digital technology in the workplace, which can improve efficiency and productivity. The government is working assiduously towards this via the online platform DigiGov. We get details from Homer DeMarc. Digital modernization is a key agent of change in the operations of the public service post-pandemic a conversation that is amplified on the heels of Public Service Day 2021. The COVID-19 pandemic has emphasized the necessity of digital technology in the workplace and has highlighted when used efficiently, technology can vastly improve productivity. The government of St. Lucia continues to work prudently towards achieving public sector modernization. Significant strides have been made via the online platform DigiGov. Marlon Nassus is the Director of Public Sector Modernization. Digital technologies will fundamentally and continuously change how we operate, how we do business. And that is, government has not been spared that either. And uh, as a result, um, we, we see ourselves focusing heavily on digital transformation and how over time this digital transformation can assist us in providing better services to the public. So uh, we, we do have that transformative type of activity within the government and um, we're hoping that this project, this, this process can then be the catalyst for 
um, how we, we imp um, how technology would impact um, our society and um, our people as a whole. The DigiGov platform facilitated over 10,000 online driver's license applications after only one year of operation. Another public service agency which will soon benefit from government's modernization efforts is the Civil Status Registry. The entity will experience complete automation of its vital records management system and digitalization of its operations through DigiGov. Valinda Peer is Registrar of Civil Status. Modernization will serve um, to increase the accessibility of services. It will increase that exponentially with emphasis at the convenience convenience to the customer, that's what we were really focusing on. For that reason, we would like to encourage customers to utilize the online platform once it's introduced so that um, they can access it via the electronic device any and everywhere. We anticipate an, a decrease in the long lines and waits at the civil status registry and we are also expecting an increase in the online expedited services via the DigiGov platform. Customers will also be able to monitor and track the status of the application using the DigiGov um, platform and there will be a two-way communication, whereas the civil status registry would be the one that was informed of processes as it happens, but now the customers would be able to be, have an input in what is happening because they would be able to receive status updates as it happened on the status of the application. This shift in operations will lead to the effective decentralization of the agency's services. So persons within the various communities are expected they will be able to um, access the civil registration system from various communities and the customers will have the option not only to apply online but also to pay online. For customers who do not wish that option, they also can go into the various locations um, for example, Viewfort, Sufre, to name a few, and access the civil registration system using service bureau agents and um, to be able to pay online. So we are excited about that opportunity given that it's aimed at improving convenience, facilitating convenience to our customers. It will save time, it will save costs, persons will no longer require face-to-face -face contact with the registry if they utilize that platform. So we are really excited about such an opportunity. A fundamental consideration during this undertaking is the legal reform to protect customers' information. Amendments have been made to the Electronic Transactions Act and efforts are underway to improve the enforcement of the Data Protection Act. From the Government Information Service, I'm Huma Dimak reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Climat la terre a quand changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros de l'eau et que la prend de l'eau. Car des tous les animaux et plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud. Et qu'a tué place qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière se pressent. Car qui était d'un côté et allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué en petit zin gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à sous quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre à venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à sous quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous tout au niveau de la terre, caboulé gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça a en écorce la terre à venir à changer plus chaud. Ça nous est pour faire actuellement même, c'est pour adapter. Fait tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protecter tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumée qui est naturelle. Batik kaye nous pour abattre de mange en temps de cyclone et de l'eau. Construire canal pour l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui le canal n'a pas les ordres. Fait tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps de changement climat. Ça. Trouver plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger le corps et tout l'autre set les siens. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayola. Monsieur Tan Genel, Monsieur Madame Department, qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement cette fois-ci. Ça, c'est GIS, ça, c'est depuis la télévision nationale, puis il y a NTN, qui a passé une nouvelle en Aquayola. Passé au Primus Hutchinson. Assurance nationale de santé pour PIA qui est en chemin pour venir en réalité, 
qui fait assurer que les plus pauvres et qui occupent les faibles à cette ci pas rester derrière en bas de ces là Après le gouvernement établi un grand système d'assurance là il a posé attention à ce qui est moins privilège en pays cette ci Chef officier des affaires économiques et de recherche à département finance, c'est M. Janaï Leos, dit que le gouvernement a décidé pour prendre responsabilité pour payer l'assurance là pour ceux qui ne pas capable. Léos dit que il y a un plan qui est en place si pour garder pour tous ces monde qui sont pauvres à cette ci pour qu'ils puissent recevoir le service d'assurance de santé et plusieurs autres services nationaux et bénéfices qui normalement ne peuvent pas trouver l'occasion pour ces services là. Mais toutes ces nécessités là sont en place aussi pour faire assurer que ces monde qui sont sélectés, ces monde qui sont véritablement pauvres. Mais c'est Léon qui fait comprendre que il y a une façon que le gouvernement a gardé, c'est pour établir un système d'assurance côté tout le monde qui est pauvre et qui n'est pas pauvre, qui s'est trouvé assurance par le pays. Eh bien, il y a un côté, eh bien, côté pays qui a adressé les gens qui sont pauvres seulement et pour eux qui sont plus capables pour suivre le service d'assurance. Les employeurs, eh bien, ils ont assurance qui ont même choisi. plan, c'est pour tout le monde tomber en bas assurance santé nationale. Là, et à parmi ça, à parmi eux, ça, avec à parmi eux qui moins privilège et que yo ça, yo qui s'agit en tuer en retraite. Bateau Tourist Celebrity Millennium, qui a tué en la route Castri mardi le 29 juin 2021. Ça c'est commencement opération service touristique. En pays cette ci depuis après maladie corona, a arrêté toute opération des affaires touristiques à cette ci et aussi en région en région. Celebrity Millennium qui est entré à cette ci à peu près sept et demi bon matin, mardi le 29 ça c'est j et puis la nièce à qui il a ni à boy bon 400 passagers touristes. Annoncement été fait par les officiers touristiques à cette ci vendredi passé. Développement ça a camouflé qui Opération des affaires touristes qui est vivée en plein encore, côté le business et le travail en secteur touristique qui a dépend seulement à ce business là, en secteur salaire, pour vivre ni anti-salaire en poche encore. Plus qu'il y a 1000 travailleurs touristiques caspés pour sa vie et trouver l'occasion, bénéfice secteur salaire. Tout ça qu'a fait à Bajid pour faire assurer qu'il pays a bien protégé la santé publique par le a établi un bon programme de ménagement touristique qui a fait à différents grades consacrés à la qui a viré à opération. Il faut qu'à continuer pour viré établir opération secteur bateau touristique. À cette ici, ça c'est de continuer sans pause. Tout ça c'était pour voir qui cette ici vous suivez à service service à la t'es fait à plus ça t'es fait à plusieurs discussions et puis les gros grec touristiques et aussi yoki à cette ici qui est engagé en service touristique pays. Chef officier extension du département agriculture, comme il le a qui conseillé les cultivateurs pour planter dans les qui ne sont pas affectés par le cyclone durant la saison. Ça, c'est si un cyclone. M. Jebatis a demandé les farmers pour planter ces qualités dans les côté même si la nuit de l'eau est bien pile la pluie et bien vent, ces âmes ne sont pas trouvées détruites et qui ne ni pas récolte après le cyclone passé. Ça, ça fait, c'est garder pour planter patate. Ça, patate, là, qui fait, fait, là, qui couvert, qui couvert terre, qui a aussi maoué terre. Et même si de l'eau passe dans les jardins, patate, là, si il y a bon en bas terre, ou qui est still joué dans un record. Si on est dans un record, papa, avec les autres, c'est pas ça. De l'eau, ça passe, c'est pas ça. Mais il y a deux bouts. Mais, malheureusement, de l'aller à ce cycle, on a passé à nous, les autres cultivateurs, nous, les choupons, nous, les tomates, c'est pas ça, là. C'est pour ça important pour nous assurer un inventory, soit at least um, si pour ça, nous savons que um, c'est si pour qu'il y pour recouvrir. Je vais aussi conseiller les femmes pour toujours tenir des informations à ces animaux qui ont été unis. Ça veut dire que les animaux sont unis, par exemple, quand ils étaient pour le cochon et l'autre. Pour si on a un gros de l'eau, eh il va falloir affecter la place côté de ces animaux.
parce que l'année côté passe en pas pas pa, pa, ligne vie fort côté montagne qui est poule et roule qui est pour la peine mm -hmm. so soon make sure on est inventory of côté c'est en um, qui quantité on est à côté en situation ça là si vous savez pas pour l'un côté leur vie peut-être qu'elle monte et vous savez tirer c'est pour là on est chance pour tirer ou tirer ou mettre en dans l'autre côté mm -hmm. si il y a après Andy il y a cinq semaines et demi et quoi ça c'est bon l'autre semaine ou quoi ou quoi um, ou quoi récolter ou ça ou ça fait ou ça coûte un um, monde qui a ou quoi vendre bah yo et moi dis aussi possible pour y avoir ces ces animaux avec pour y pour y tuer yo et comment c'est processé yo ça c'est mon qui n'est pas pour mon qui n'est pas cochon nous nous ça nous n'achète pas cochon bon à vingt bolos vieux fait des marches pour tirer ces bêtes là là pas quitter ces bêtes là là parce que ou quitter là les les à venir l'eau monte ou quoi ils perdent yo fait ça au pays quand chose est bête, vous pouvez obliger à mettre un coup, un coup, un coup, un coup, un coup, un coup, un patio, avec mettre un côté, ou sonner dans l'autre caille, quand chose est l'autre côté, ou sonner les gens, ou ça peut se mettre là, mettre un dans l'autre caille, pour être plus deux jours, trois jours, ou quand il ne faut pas perdre ces animaux. Ça, ça c'était la voix euh, chef officier extension du département agriculture, c'est le site, comme il y a le Jobatis, et ça c'est le côté de notre nouvelle là, monsieur, madame, donc je vais mettre autant pour vous regarder. Je vais vous donner l'information pour vous. Et puis, si vous avez conservé la vie, vous allez vous donner une nouvelle à vous. Je vais vous donner une nouvelle à vous. Je vais vous donner une nouvelle à vous. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.